you buy a tree um it's got a big green uh, a big red x on it and a message what are the the one message tells you that the tree's for the chop literally what's the handwritten message saying so some a resident has come by and put this on i don't know i literally don't know, don't know who did that i assume it's someone who lives in the area they're saying look out for magpies in this tree um they've spotted a, a nest here and that's kind of one of the big problems about what the oh, council is doing right now is that we're right, right in the middle of nesting season which goes right through yes. and until the end of july that kind of time um and if you're aware that a tree has uh, an active nest in it it's actually a criminal offense to chop that tree down or interfere uh, with it in a way that would harm that wildlife so that's one of the strange things about what's happening is that the councillor seemed to be in a terrible hurry to chop all these trees down uh when really there is no hurry at all if there's some really urgent cases of course you know they need to they need to protect public safety but actually most of these trees don't seem to be in that position at all now did you did i hear you right at the beginning you you're a councillor yourself that's correct yeah i've been a councillor at uh, st Albans for 12 years with the green party yeah so you're obviously one of the minority voices uh, on the council yes although i think in st Albans at the moment probably one of the majorities on this uh, you know, residents and uh, campaign groups and St. Norman's, uh approached me about this when they heard about it, because uh, obviously I've got a link to the council and it was the council mm. that's doing the chopping. So they said, you know, can you help us talk to the council? They're not listening to us. So that's how I got involved. Now, as I said before, some of the trees are very obviously, and you touched upon that yourself, they're damaged, they're diseased, and they need to come down in order to be safe. But what you seem to be saying is that there seems to be, what, some indiscriminate uh, choices of which trees have to come down? Well, on the council website, they've listed all 300, which has gone now gone down to 250 trees, and they said the reason for each tree. Some of the times it's because the tree's dead, sometimes because it's, it's dangerous in some way, but the majority are not listed as that. The majority are just things like show signs of, um, of poor growth or, you know, seems to, seems to have some deterioration. Um, you know, not reasons that feel urgent, not reasons that feel like necessarily we need to actually chop the whole tree down, maybe you're going to attend to it. You know, I'm not a tree expert at all, but we've got an arboriculturist on, on the team um, of, of residents who has inspected some of these trees and said, you know what, a lot of these, you know, I've got some good, good years of life left in them. Um, and when you're talking about, you know, climate change, flooding, and all these issues that are in, in the world that are so crucial at the moment, you know, health and safety is just going to be one of the things that you bear in mind. Of course, health and safety is important. You can't stress that enough. But it's just one of the risks that we're dealing with. Uh, and, and nobody wants to lose a tree if it doesn't have to be lost. Now, I just should just read, St Albans District Council said that trees were assessed by contractors before being failed to ensure that nesting birds are not disturbed. As you said, there's a magpie in that one and it, the tree by you and it's got a red marks the spot for felling. They're saying 50 trees were recommended for removal because they were dead, dying, disease, had suffered significant damage or were a health and safety risk, good old health and safety. Residents apparently are made aware of it. Uh, they say that they are going to, it's part of a normal maintenance program that's sensitive to and takes into consideration wildlife needs, tree safety and public safety. And as part of their climate change commitment, they're saying trees that are removed will be replaced in line with the local tree replacement program is that not good enough there's a lot to unpack in that um yes. basically this is just that this is a, there's a health this is a health and safety exercise i've been told this specifically by council officers of the staff at the council and told me there's nothing to see here this is a health and safety exercise clearly it's not just that it's bigger than mm. that it's turned into a national news story we can tell people are really interested in it um mm. In terms, in terms of the replanting, yeah, replanting is uh, planting is great, of course, and St Albans Council and lots of councils around the country are planting hundreds or thousands of trees, and of course that's fantastic, everyone's pleased about that. But almost all those trees are tiny, tiny little twigs or little saplings. Most of those, or a lot of those, do not survive, partly because just saplings just don't, um, but also because they're just not maintained because there's no budget to maintain those trees. So the great thing about these is that they're up and they're ready and they've, they've been here for you know decades and decades and potentially could be for decades more. Those new trees are not any kind of replacement for these in the, sen in the sense of what they look like or how likely they are to survive or the benefit or the beauty of them or how they help with flooding, how they help with air pollution, all those things. Those trees, those new trees will take decades uh, mm -hmm. to, to replace uh, you know, so probably replace the function of a tree like this one. Um, and, you know, when we're talking about 2050, um, with the, the government's um, plans for, for getting to net zero, for example, around 2050 or 2045 or 2040, 
that's just a few years away. Those little saplings yeah. are not going to be very big by then. I mean, so we just need to be really, really mindful before we chop a tree down, look at all the risks, balance everything up. And that's what we're asking the council to do, is to stop right now, stop yeah. doing this, apart from the really urgent cases, the ones that are definitely imminent danger. Stop it, take a pause, re-look at the list, look at all the risks, balance those risks up, and get people involved. You know, this is a local council. It's just going yes. to be a public body um that represents people you know i'm there and all the other councillors are there to represent our constituents and, and yes. the decisions are supposed to be made, made in public and that's that's one of the things you know you mentioned the results of the local election um it's a very heavily dominate uh, lived and dominated council now this is this is not a vice political issue at, at all genuinely but mm. when you get a council that has got almost all the councillors and 90 percent or more of the councillors are from one party you tend to get decisions like this that are made behind closed doors not necessarily intentionally uh, because that's the way it's done. I've gone into yes. committee meetings over the last year or so, and there's no there's no discussion. All the all the decisions have already been made because they're all you know they're all in their in their lived down room, and you know it would be any other party as well. I come yeah. in and I say, oh, hang, on, hang on a minute, can, can we just can we debate this? Can we have a little chat about this? And this has become the ultimate issue. Unfortunately, the other weird thing about it, Tricia, is that this all happened over the local election period. These signs went up uh. just a, a couple of weeks before the local election start. Cynical people might say, why would you do that? <laughs> all the, count the councillors are knocking on doors. I was over in my ward, or not in my ward now, I was over in my ward knocking on doors, all the other councillors were too. I'm not a cynical person, Tricia, but a cynical person might say, yes. that's interesting timing. And mm. now, guess what, Tricia? Now we've got a by-election. As it happens, a councillor stood down. We've also, so we're still in an election period in St Albans, and there are really strict rules about what councillors can do in election periods. You're not supposed to do anything controversial or politically controversial in any way. This is the biggest political controversial story in St Albans for years. As you said, you know, how surprised are you to see, to see this happening in St Albans? St Albans is a quiet place, right? We're it's not gorgeous. On the news it's often. gorgeous. One, yeah. of, one, of the things, one of the things about St Albans, I, as I said, I remember the parks and the trees because I used to run. I, I wanted to ask, are all these trees in one area or are they sort of dotted around St Albans? Yeah, they're dotted around. They're dotted around. So St Albans District, which is the area that the council looks after, includes the city of St Albans. That's the main date. Harpenden, the town just to the north, yep. and some villages around. Some lovely, beautiful villages. Gorgeous. And the trees are dotted all around. They're all highways trees because they are owned by they're owned by the county council because the county council looks after highways. But the St Albans council has taken on the job of actually chopping the trees down. Uh, so that makes it even more difficult because if they were all together, I mean, it, it depends on which village and where it is that people even notice if there's a, a tree there. What village? What have villages yeah. done apart from bringing to the attention of the media? What sorts of things have they, have they done? I mean, uh, the, so, so there's the signs like this going up. There's, you know, there's been protests um, in certain sites. Um, I think, you know, the, the, the people, the residents are, are doing what they should do, which is coming to their councillors. I, I haven't yeah. heard from other councillors. Other councillors have not contacted me about this, which is one of the sad things, because I think really, you know, we're all on the same side here. We all want to preserve yeah. trees where we possibly can. Um, and, and it's been, you know, there's been a lot of publicity. We've been in the national newspapers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, TV, radio. Um, other councillors, unfortunately, have, have not approached me about this. Um, I hope they, they're doing things. I hope they're talking uh, to their leadership. Um, but being an opposition councillor, I, I don't know. Um, but I'm the only person I've seen in the paper on TV, it's so I don't, yeah. I don't know what they're doing about it. I was, I was going to say it's sad. It's sad that I think that one of the the there are many, as you say, many la uh, different levels to talk about. But one of the things that when people are excluded or feel excluded from big decisions which affect their their neighbourhoods, their villages, their streets, and what have you, it then takes on this whole cloak of secrecy. And even yeah. worse than losing trees, people start to lose trust in the decisions that that council can make. And some of them might be good decisions coming up. Who you're, will know? You're absolutely right. <laughs> You know, so so I think I mean you know, I hate to use the pun of of, of um, you know ground roots and what have you, but trust is built from from the roots up. It really is, isn't it? Because if you feel that yeah. one decision's been made on the secret, then you start sort of disrespecting, um, being suspicious of everything, virtually yeah. everything else. This is a good starting point. It could be a yeah. good publicity point or PR exercise for the council in just listening yeah. to people. 
Uh, you're, you're, you're dead right, and those are exactly the points that I've been making. I've been <laughs> emailing the, the senior people at the council. I've, I've tried emailing uh, senior councillors. I'm now emailing, trying to talk to the top council officers, the staff at the council, to make exactly those points. You know, apart from everything else, apart from the trees, as you said, exactly that word. It comes down to a trust issue. And and a body like a local council, you know, there's only a few hundred people working there, looking after I don't know, 150,000 residents in the, in the district. You need that trust, you know. It's like oh, the police. Yes. It's like the police force, right? There's only a few of them. They need the trust. They need to build trust. And when trust, we've seen the police, not to stretch an analogy too far, but when we see that trust start to break down, that's a real problem because they, they, you rely on that for society to work. We need to have some sort of trust. You've got cars driving past it. We need to trust that we're all obeying the rules together. You know, I agree uh, and with similar, you more. similarly with the council, and the council could do could do so much more. And there's increasingly all around the country, councils are relying um, on on voluntary services, on charities, on residents getting involved with council work because there's no money Absolutely. in the budget because the government's cut all no, the money. Don't and even so start that. This is the sort of thing that's. This is the sort of thing that's going to turn. I'm going to do that again for you. Simon, Simon, <laughs> yes, Simon, thank you. Thank you so much. If St Albans Council want to get in touch and, and talk to us about it, well, I'm happy to bring the both of you together. But thank you for this and, and much love to the people of St Albans.